Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So a few weeks ago, I came across a type of time-restricted eating pattern while I was writing for this international magazine that I work with, and it's called Chrono Nutrition, and I'm pretty sure you haven't heard about it because when I was writing about it or when I was asked to write about it, I hadn't heard about it until that point. So I sometimes think like I know it all, right? But the emerging topics like this remind me of three things. That one, the human body is an incredibly complex entity, and that two, there's still so much for us to learn. And that three, the unique thing about nutritional science is that it's always evolving and it's always expanding. And I've talked about this before, but before I go any further, who am I? My name is Dr. Faye Kazi. I'm a registered dietitian with an extensive background in nutrition and dietetics. I'm a published author. I have a PhD in rehabilitation science. Sorry, that's my hand in the back, son in the background. Um, and I'm here on YouTube to create a nutritionally informed community. For the past two decades, and I believe that there is quite the consensus on this, the general public and the scientific community at large has perceived that achieving nutrition and wellness to more or less adhering to four basic principles. So the first one being eat more fruits and vegetables. The second one being try to avoid processed foods. The third one, keep hydrated. And the fourth one, get adequate exercise and rest. Even though these are definitely important practices, the research coming out in the past decade or so has shown us with the emerging evidence on the gut microbiome and the circadian rhythm, these four principles might just be skimming the surface of what it really means to be healthy. Which brings me to the somewhat triggering question. Do you know that when you you eat might be just as important as what you eat. This was actually a statement that was pulled right out of a scientific journal, like I didn't make it up. And it was definitely eye-opening and I think to some it might be slightly triggering because we put such a huge emphasis on what it is that we eat as being an indication of nutritional wellness, but that might just be a slice of the pie. And if you're wondering, chrononutrition is not the same as intermittent fasting. In fact, experts in this area say that fasting upsets the notion of chrononutrition because it's all about the circadian rhythm, right? And these prolonged periods of fasting might interrupt that circadian rhythm process. Chrononutrition is a practice of timing your meals and your food intake with your natural circadian rhythm, which is your built-in biological clock. Now, understanding this is important because there's a series of chemicals and hormones that get triggered and released throughout different hours throughout the day. These triggers and cascades do everything from assist with digestion and metabolism and the disposal of waste and toxins. And mind you, it's the physiological buildup of waste and toxins that can lead to inflammation, which has been directly tied to most chronic diseases. Aside from diet, this might have something to do with circadian rhythm hygiene. So if your body is doing something, whether you're eating or whether you're sleeping, but it's not during the peak state of performance, that might mean less optimal results. The research is showing us that there are peak performance times throughout the day, whether it's the period where you get the best sleep, which is actually between midnight and dawn, or the period when your metabolism is at its optimal, which is between noon and 3 p.m. So what this is suggesting is that we should eat most, if not all of our calories around 2 p.m. And yes, there are definitely benefits to chronic nutrition. There's lots of clinical trials that have been conducted already. Some of the benefits include weight loss, improvements in insulin sensitivity, support in gut health, and increase in immunity and overall improved sleep, but there's still a lot more on this that I'd love to touch on in the future. For now, here are three simple tips that can help you incorporate principles of chrononutrition in your lifestyle. A short disclaimer, this information is for educational purposes and is not intended to take the place of medical advice. Number one, front load your calories. Try to consume most of your calories earlier in the day when your metabolism is at its peak. And this can also prevent you from eating more later into the evening, which has been shown to promote better weight management. So ideally, and this is what I like to do, you come Combine your breakfast with your lunch and just have a big brunch, followed by an optional much lighter dinner. Number two, this one's really important. Focus on nutrient dense and balanced ingredients. The more nutrient dense, the higher the nourishment and the less likely you're gonna crave unhealthy foods later in the day. An example of a nutrient dense meal looks like a big bowl of quinoa with black beans and eggs and avocado. And then you can throw your own homemade salsa on that. That right there represents a perfectly balanced meal. You have complex carbohydrates, high quality protein and healthy fats. And it's both nourishing and satisfying. An example of a less nutrient dense meal would be like a bowl of Cheerios with like almond milk, store-bought almond milk. And as an FYI, most store-bought milks are very low in actual almonds and contain thickeners. If you want to see how to make your own delicious almond milk, I put a link in the bottom bar below for a video I made a while back. The bowl of Cheerios is really high in carbohydrates. It's going to spike your glucose and you're going to be hungry within an hour. It's a low protein source and there's virtually no essential fats. Number three, prioritize protein at dinner and stop eating at least two to three hours before you go to bed. Including protein-rich foods in your evening meal is going to assist with muscle repair and growth during sleep, which is really great. High quality protein sources would be like boiled eggs. You could have grilled salmon, 
um, grilled tofu on top of grilled vegetables, or you can put those on a beautiful salad. And for more protein, you can go ahead and add legumes to that. For those of you who know I'm Seventh-day Adventist, and I did find it quite interesting that Ellen White does touch on this several times throughout her writings because she wrote extensively on health. She was always ahead of her time, and I believe that was through inspiration. She talks about the benefits of eating two meals a day instead of three, having a lighter meal in the evening, and avoiding eating and sleeping right away. If you're interested, you can definitely read more about that in her book, Councils on Diet and Food. So Chrono Nutrition does get my bar of approval. We talked about this before. Bar stands for beneficial, applicable, and relevant, and I do believe that it fits that criteria. It represents a promising and practical approach to optimizing health through the timing of food intake and the existing evidence does suggest that paying attention to when we eat might be just as important as what we eat in promoting health and longevity. And I think that's something we all want. I went ahead and listed two papers in the bottom bar below if you're interested in learning more about chrononutrition. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am planning on uploading a video every Monday moving forward. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to join the Nutritionally Informed community. Okay guys, take care, bye.